Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're going to bleed the E-diff in this Ferrari F430. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is our dealership, NG Supercars, and this Ferrari F430 is for sale through our dealership, NG Supercars. So go check it out on our website, ngsupercars.com. Also, we sell parts and services through our other website, normalguyssupercar.com, so go check that out as well. Use code NGS10, it hooks you up with 10% off. Well, this car, we've been having a bunch of weird issues. We had to replace the actuators on the transmission and some other stuff, but when we did that, we got some air in the lines, and now the E-diff is acting up, so we need to do an E-diff bleed. Well, I thought I had done it yesterday, and I didn't. It turns out I did the procedure wrong, so we're gonna do it properly, see if we can get a better bleed on it, and hopefully have this thing working correctly. Uh, it's kind of a multi-step process. The first thing is that you need to have a computer like a Launch X431 or something like that that can activate the E-diff mode. So I've already plugged in the Launch little dongle into the OBD port and I turned the car to ignition on, but if you notice, it's not running. Next step <laughs> is we're going to go into the Launch. All right, we're gonna go into Ferrari and 430, okay. And in here is differential system, actuation test, E-diff bleed, on is enabled, off is disabled. So we're gonna turn that on. Okay, so here's where I screwed up. Uh, a lot of these things you can bleed with it off, but this one you actually have to have the engine running. Now that we have turned that on, basically it's actuated the bleed mode, okay? So next thing we're gonna do is actually connect the bleeder, turn the car on, and then bleed the valve. The bleeder is located right there, okay? There's a little cap that you gotta remove, and it is a seven millimeter. So we're going to connect our little bleeder right here, little bleed line, right? Let's get our bleed line going. Okay, we've got our bleed line connected. So now we're gonna turn on the car and then we'll use our little seven millimeter wrench and crack that puppy open. So, all right, let's crank it on. All right. So keys forward, we're gonna foot on brake and... Okay. Now, just let it idle and crack the valve. I just start bleeding like crazy and it almost pulled up the whole thing good lord huh, that came out fast all right well we definitely have to add new fluid now uh, let's turn the e-diff bleed off uh, all right I guess it doesn't like doing that while the car is running so I guess now you have to turn it off again and turn it back on off there Okay, that was crazy. So <laughs> apparently it doesn't do it when it first starts up. You gotta wait a little while. That just bled out everything. Hopefully I don't have error in the system again. Now I need to check that before I call it good. All right, YouTube, so we popped off the side panel and topped back off the F1 fluid. I don't think it went through all of it and got to where it was just empty, although it may have. In which case, we're gonna have to re-bleed this thing you know what, I think it's best if we just do it one more time, just to be safe. This time we'll just crack it and then shut it off. Dude, it gush out. Oh yeah, it, dude, <laughs> it filled up that whole... Holy shit. It like all of a sudden just started... So having it running is it like essential. Did, but it's weird, it doesn't do it at first. It like waited... Maybe there was something clogged in there or something. I, or it, I think maybe it waits until it gets to a certain pressure or something. I don't know, anyway, it just sat there. I had the thing open, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. All of a sudden I was just like... Boom, and started like, like a squirt gun. so I was like ah, and I like trying to shut it off real quick. I was like, 
lesson learned, right? Well, All right. Hopefully that Let's try it again. I'm well, gonna, that's why it wasn't working yesterday, so maybe that'll fix it then. Yeah, I think, well, I'm going to bleed it one more time because I think it may have sucked in all of this. Oh, okay. So I'm going to start it up again. I'm going to drain that, start it up again. We'll try this one more time. All right, we're going to do this again. So we're going to turn the ble bleed on so it's on. Okay. Now we got to start the car. Okay. Car's running. Now, I guess we got to wait for it. Supposedly, I guess we can check on the pressure. Still really high. Oh, there it goes. Now it's pressurizing it. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll crack the bleeder and see if we get some stuff. And if not, we'll wait a minute and try cracking it again. This time we'll have a wrench on it ready to go. Ready and crack. That's a good little dribble. Much more controlled. All right, the good news, I'm not seeing any air anywhere in the line. All right, we got the air out. Nice, that's what we wanted to see. So the little air bubbles are gone, so now can turn it off. Test this thing. So turn off. Turn it on. Go back into our launch. And turn off EDIF bleed. Okay. I guess now we can try driving it and see if we get the EDIF air. All right, YouTube. I took it for a drive and I did still get the EDIF light, but it only did it after I drove it a long, long time and was shifting a lot and all that stuff. So I'm gonna bleed it one more time. This time what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run a line from the bleeder all the way to the reservoir and I'm just gonna let it flow through for like, I don't know, like a minute. Just totally purge every ounce of possible fluid, just recycling it, recycling it. So I think that should hopefully get rid of any air in the system, theoretically because uh, uh, I'm otherwise I'm stumped I don't know we've driven this thing a lot all right we're just gonna let it drain out it goes in pulses so you see it's slowing down in any second now it'll start speeding up again I have seen a few tiny air bubbles so I guess there's a tiny bit of air in there well it's basically stopped for a while hey YouTube I just realized I didn't ever do a conclusion on this video so uh, the air that we were getting, or I should say we still are getting because it did not go away, is C2017. It is pressure deviation control too high. I've done some reading on this and it says uh, basically online that either the solenoid for the EDIF is gone bad or it's got some gunk in there and it needs to be flushed. So I'm going to first try and flush it more. I'm going to let it just, I don't know, maybe I'm going to flush it like four or five times just to really try and see if we can get anything out of it. Because we did see some chunks of crap come out when we first started bleeding. So it's entirely possible that some bad fluid got in there and some dirt got in there or whatever. So we're gonna do that. If that doesn't fix it, then we're probably gonna have to replace the EDIF solenoid, unfortunately. And then of course, we'll have to bleed the EDIF again. I think it's the last of the problems for this Ferrari. Uh, finally, hopefully it's gonna be ready and driving and not having errors. So that's the goal is to have a good, well-functioning F1 Ferrari F430 for y'all to buy. So anyway, if you like this sort of content, we do lots of DIY on the cars that we have for our dealership. So please like, share, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out NG Supercars, our dealership, if you're interested in buying any of these things. And go to normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services from us. And of course, you can use the code NGS10. It hooks you up with 10% off. We do appreciate your guys' support, and we'll see you in the next one. We're going to be doing a lot of cool car stuff. You're gonna wanna stay tuned, it's gonna be sweet.